And welcome in to a Monday edition of the Backstage Pass. Always busy as we're just two weeks out now for being in Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, myself, Kirsty Krause, and Jeff McMahon at CRS 2022, February 23rd to 25th. We're going to arrive a couple days early to get the lay of the land to see what's going on down there. It's going to be a great week. We all know this. Uh, just some great artists to hang out with. Uh, a few names to kind of throw out there. Shannon Doa, John Barry, uh, Craig Campbell. Uh, looks like Dustin Collins and a whole lot more out there as we get ready for some great interviews there. It's uh, CRS 2022 presented by Bangtail Whiskey, uh, Hank Jr. Productions, and our good friends over at MitchMax.com. Uh, uh, if you want some of that backstage pass merchandise, go ahead and head over there. And uh, they actually have my own coffee mug and uh, tank tops for women out there, too. So definitely go grab some of those. We appreciate all the support out there. Again, thanks to the sponsors and pleased to welcome in. You know, it's, it's amazing how many interviews we do in Nashville. I can tell you that right now. But when I get back to my home state of Texas, I love this, and uh, I'm going to say this right now. Texas country artist, she'll drink to that. So will I, too, <laughs> throughout the broadcast. As uh, Tiona Campbell joins us here on the uh, Backstage Pass, presented by uh, Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, MitchMax.com and our good friends at Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. Tiona, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? It's uh, it's getting busy this time of year. <laughs> that is good. That's good. <laughs> Which is, uh, you're in media. You know what it's kind of like to be, uh, to be busy there, too. But... Uh, I love your story because uh, small town girl, Texas born, Texas raised, uh, East Texas, uh, listening to some great ladies growing up, including one of my favorites, Amy Grant. Uh, tell me about the story of just the the music and uh, yourself as an artist and what kind of led you down that path of becoming a, a musician. Yeah, definitely. I would love to share that story. So, you know, I grew up in East Texas, a real small town, like 3,000 people. St. Augustine is actually the name of it. So I um, just grew up in church singing, you know, graduated high school, got married, had kids. So I just thought that part of my life was over. And I just kept singing in the car and just singing at church. And I don't know, like six years ago, I just really felt led to get back into music. And for the first time ever, like really considered like writing my first song. And that was just kind of um, literally out of nowhere. Like I just felt like God was saying, I want you to write a song. And that just kind of started a journey of like, okay, where is he taking this? Like, what am I, I've never written a song my whole entire life. Like, why is he telling me this now? <laughs> but, you know, forever I kind of ran from my country roots. It was like, I lived in the country. It's boring. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows your business. I just wanted the city life. I wanted to sing like Mariah Carey when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, and so it's so funny how Full Circle comes around and like, I'm a country artist now and I love country and it's true to everything that I am and what I was raised. And mm -hmm. I have such, you know, a passion to write, you know, these, I'm almost like a rascal flats kind of like vibe because everything I'm super intentional about the message, you know, um, and the song. And I felt mm -hmm. like rascal flats always really, were really good about that. Now tell me about uh, church being a big influence and also too, uh, and I used to do this too. I'd sing in my grandpa's uh, truck growing up. And also one time, Actually, actually shifted gears in it, let go of the brake, and uh, got my you know what torn up for backing it into a tree and uh, denting his oh, tailgate. Yeah. But uh, singing in the truck sometimes we get distracted. But that's a pretty cool story of singing in your daddy's truck and also yeah. church being a big, big influence. Talk about that too. Yeah, so we grew up, you know, um, small town, small churches. So like my dad ran the sound, my brother was the drummer, I did the tambourine and sang and. My mom played the piano. So like the whole family was just kind of in the, the small town church, you know, music. And um, so, yeah, I just, I grew up around church music. Yeah. My dad would throw me in the truck and like, you didn't wear seatbelts back then. Not like you now. I mean, I'm sure people wore seatbelts back then too, but yeah, he would just throw me in his truck. I would stand up because I was a little itty, you know, bitty still and mm -hmm. would just sing my little heart out, you know, down to the store and back with dad. And mm -hmm. I just always have loved to sing. My mom actually grew up, I grew up listening to her sing. She did try the music industry a little bit uh, in the beginning. And I would just kind of play with my toys and listen to mom and just sing along. But I just never thought I was like, it's just crazy. I never took it serious. Like I even made up songs when I was a kid, but they were dumb. <laughs> they were stupid. And I never took mm -hmm. it serious, you know, that I could actually do something with my life you know, um, was something I really love. And so it was just later in life when I just figured out, like, I truly love this and I want to do something with it. Now tell me about a, a cool story. Uh, a two-time Grammy nominee, Sarah Kelly, had a big influence. Uh, school, September of 15. Uh, I mentioned we do our homework here on the show, so that's a yeah, big, uh, big deal there. But a big influence for you, and it kind of led to uh, things such as uh, writing songs and playing piano, right? 
Yes, yes, exactly. So when I felt that, you know, tug in my heart to like write my first song, I'm like, I've never done this. There's just no way possible I can figure this out on my own. So I just, I kind of did it, tried to do it on my own for a little bit, but I was like, okay, well, maybe I need to at least get vocal coaching. You know, maybe I'm supposed to be getting back into like a church worship setting. I really didn't know where God was leading me. So I decided to reach out to Sarah Kelly because I knew she did vocal lessons here in Houston. Had no clue that she was a two-time Grammy nominee or that she knew song structure and how to write songs. But when I reached out to her that I was looking for vocal lessons, um, I'm thinking about getting back into, you know, a church choir, church worship kind of, you know, setting. She said, you know, have you ever played an instrument? You know, do you know how to write songs? And I'm like, Okay, I didn't say anything to her about writing music. So I was like, what the heck is God doing here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I just decided to sign up and figure this whole thing out, how to write music. She said, I'll teach you basic chord structures on the piano um, for keys. And you can write, you know, in in the right keys. We'll demo your songs every six to eight weeks. Yeah. And so her husband is also a producer. So you get to produce your stuff there. Mm -hmm. And, um... Because she's on the Grammy board, she's able to put your songs on the ballots. So it's a huge, like, it was just a huge stepping stone and where God was leading me. Now, I love the, the stepping stones that artists go through, the path, I should say, to kind of get where they want to go. Because no musician ever rests on their laurels. They put out something there. Next month, they're working a new single, new EP. Uh, for you, that's kind of been a good path because I, I go back to the... Uh, uh, one of a kind EP you put out, I believe it was August of 17 and um, yep. the first single to uh, irrevocable. Tell me about uh, the first single, the yeah. Instagram attention it brought. And then of course how it led to the EP. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, irrevocable was my like third song totally. Mm-hmm. And um, I've ever written, but it was just so <laughs> um, personal to the path that I was walking that, you know, it says, in Romans eleven twenty nine, that your gifts and callings are irrevocable. So it was just like, wow, like no matter where you are in life, how old you are, how young you are, you know, how unqualified you are, like truly, like once you find your purpose, like nothing can stop you and God will open the doors. And I just felt like that's kind of where I was. And that's where irrevocable comes from. And, um, that song just really touched a lot of people and it just brought a lot of attention to my Instagram page. Me saying, you know, Tiana's music journey as my page, Mm -hmm. I'm taking you on this journey of like, you're going to watch me be okay or bad or mess up. And then you're going to see me like win. Like I want you a part of it because that's what everybody, you know, has to walk when you go after your dreams. And so I'm just like, I'm taking people on this journey. And I think that's inspiring people to see me maybe fall or see me not, get something that I, you know, really wanted to, you know, achieve, um, but I kept trying and now this open door is here, you know, and I think that it just attracted a lot of people in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, within a year, I grew like 8,000 on Instagram and it's kind of, you know, a slower growth now, but we all know the algorithm's a little different. It mm-hmm. adjusts a lot, you know, about two years ago, but I still am growing and I'm still inspiring. Um, and, um, that's all I can ask for is just to keep connecting and keep, you know, um, getting my music out there and sharing, you know, my story. So that's a great story. And I love the new single underneath, which is out there across all the uh, digital platforms came out January 21st. So be sure and check that out for all the viewers and listeners out there. we got a lot to talk about, a lot of ground to cover, including underneath and back porch and, uh, I've done this a few times, called my dad too as well. So definitely <laughs> we're going to talk about <laughs> all these great uh, songs and more with uh, Tiona Campbell here on the uh, Backstage Pass. Let's have you play one for us right now on the show. And uh, what's yeah. up first? Okay, I'm going to do Call My Dad first. because All right, there you go. <laughs> so this is just based on like when your man takes forever getting stuff done around the house. And you're like, you know what? Because my dad is a handyman. He can fix anything. <laughs> and um, you just kind of like, cute and sweet like don't let me call my dad babe like come on you won't let me hire a plumber you won't get it done it's time i have to call my dad (laughs) so it's just a fun song but i told when i played this live the other night i told the girls in the audience i was like listen he's been actually my husband actually been getting a lot of stuff done around the house so maybe when your man's slacking just hit play and let him hear this song (laughs) because it's actually working Okay, here we so go. I'll play it for you real quick, guys. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Beck 
can you fix the sink this weekend? There's a leak somewhere in here. Why it is the light always blinking? Don't make me count someone I know. Cause you're always forgetting. I can make a list. You don't have to worry. I won't let you miss all that needs to be fixed. We'll be real quick. It's only a few things won't take real long. If you cannot do it, baby, just just let me know. Cause I know who can. Don't make me come back down. Make me come and die. Baby, can you look at sprinklers? Can figure out just what I did. Oh, yeah, the outlet isn't working. You're always forgetting I can make a list You don't have to worry I won't let you miss All that needs to be fixed We'll be real quick It's only a few things Won't take real long if you cannot do it, baby, just, just let me know. Cause I know who can to make me come my dad. I know who can to make me come my dad. Baby, don't you make me come my dad. Baby, don't you make me come my dad. Share that on your show today. The bang is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And doing that today as we get ready for CRS, which is coming up here in just a couple of weeks, the 23rd to the 25th of February. Uh, Tiona Campbell joining us here on the show, thanks to Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, MitchMax.com, which is the official Backstage Pass merchandise uh, page online. Go get your order in now if you want to uh, have some cool stuff, support us and wear that swag. We appreciate that. And, of course, our good friends over at Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. Love the performance. I love the that, that, what kind of raspiness, that coolness in your voice just makes it look so easy when you perform it's just a great great Thank feeling so you. i do i do love that great performance um talk to me about uh the houston area playing looks like those live shows are opening back up you've done a few uh do do one of my favorite places to go to and just watch yeah. live performances out there um i know um it's, it's just a great time to see musicians back on stage doing what they love doing for you i'm, I'm sure it's picking back up right Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I host a homegrown songwriter, singer-songwriter mm -hmm. showcase here. It's a lot like the ones you see in Nashville where you have three or four artists. They're able to share some originals and some covers. Um, so, yeah, that's been great. We do that twice a month all over Houston. Um, we've even gone out to Navasota on the rooftop, real cool rooftop bar there. Um, but, yeah, so, like, all of that's opening back up. You're able to start opening up for people and book more shows. It's been so nice. I thought another cool song you did before I get to uh, a couple others, uh, Jesus and Coffee. And I love this because um, this was on, uh, uh, was this uh, Broadway in London? Is that is that correct? I mean, how, how cool was yes. that to, to perform there? And, and uh, my God, I always want to go to the UK. Oh, my gosh. You would love it. I freaking <laughs> love it. The um, They just have the funnest accent, for one. So much history, too. But I don't know. It's just a, London's just a, a really cool city. And we actually went in. Um, I went with, like, a couple of girlfriends. Um, after they had some, some major, like, like they had um, a, a huge bridge, um, mm -hmm. a bomb explode on it. Then they had an apartment complex that another bomb and, you know, and it dropped several levels. We just actually kind of went in just to level the city and visit the city. And um, I got to work with an organization and um, it allowed me an opportunity to sing Jesus and Coffee there. And it was just a super cool experience. And to see like people walking around because they do a lot of stuff on the streets there, you know, the mm -hmm. artists. And so that's where I did it. And everybody coming off like the trains, uh, the tubes, they say there, um, they were just like all smiles. You know, they just, they love country accents just as much as we love their accent so anybody country that goes over there they just love it they just want to hear us sing want to hear us talk like it's just it's a really cool connection of the two different countries you know the u.s and uk so <laughs> well we've had some uk artists so we got uh, one coming up here in a couple of weeks and i appreciate their talents just as much as i appreciate yours because it's amazing how much talent we do find over in europe and down under in australia yeah, and there canada it's a lot. It, it's just becoming more of that that norm. The country music is becoming a broad, broad category now of uh, you get a little pop in it. You get a little bit of hard rock or a little southern country. And I kind of kind of put it to a show I went to last year. Um, one of my favorite bands of all time is Blackberry Smoke. I love Charlie yeah. Starr. Got to see him at House of Blues last June in Houston. Ah, cool. But hands down, one of the best shows I ever went to. That could be southern rock. That could be country. You're, yeah. you're kind of doing a little bit of a crossover here too as well, bringing that Christian, that faith into country music at yes. the same time. And I love what you did with it, with um, Ride of My Life. Talk to me about that single when it came out. Mm. Uh, I just love that song. So I went to a carnival, a real small carnival, actually here in Houston, like in Conroe. And I just, I don't know, I walked away super inspired after this carnival. And it just reminded me of like what you go through in life when you go after everything God's created you for, your dreams, you know, and it's like, one minute you're on top of that Ferris wheel and you're like, yeah, this is great. And the next minute you're coming off the roller coaster and you're like, holy crap, I'm scared to death. You know, just all those emotions you get at the carnival. Like that's what mm -hmm. it feels like when you're going after what you really love and feel like you're supposed to be doing here on earth. And so I just wanted to capture that as like verse one is like the little girl dreaming 
you know, and all the different feels and that she can't let go of that feeling, you know, and the things that make her ignite on the inside. And so I just wanted to, to take carnival ride feels, you know, and, and even some of the words like Ferris wheel is in there and just create this, like, mm -hmm. you're going to be fearless. You're going to let go no matter what your emotion and you're just going to take the ride of your life and do what you're supposed to do. So I just love that song. It's one of my favorites. Speaking of ride of your life, uh, we talked about Dosey -si Do and how much I love going to shows uh, out there, which is not too far from me, probably a couple of hours there at Conroe from Beaumont. Uh, talk about uh, one of our recent guests. I think it was, yeah, a little bit this spring. We talked to him, or was it last year? I, I, timeline gets past me after doing so many shows. <laughs> but you had a chance to open for him at uh, Dosey -si Do, and the gentleman I'm talking about is Mr. Wink there, Neil McCoy. Uh, just a, a fantastic guy. We've had him here on the show. Oh, uh, yes. He actually did the show from his, I want to say it was his car. But we had a, a, enough just fun, and he was strumming, having a good time, and became good friends with uh, his manager. And, of course, just a great, terrific guy. I, I'm sure the same on stage at Dosey -Si Doe. What was that, oh. that moment like for you? He was so incredible. I mean, just like the nicest, funnest guy ever. And he was like, girl, I wish you the best of luck. This industry is not for you know, uh, <laughs> you know, he's like, it's tough. He's like, but he just supported me. He let me open up for him. He, um, he was like, Hey, y'all go got, get her merch after the show. You go meet her. <laughs> like, just an incredible guy. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I just, I just love him to death. Like he is just so amazing and opening up for him was so much fun. Like Probably one of one of my favorite openers for sure. <laughs> Love that story. Uh, before we play our next one, I want to know all about back porch because I thought that was something yes. that uh, I could feel as a kid growing up and just coming from a small town here in Texas too. At the same time, we know what that's all about with uh, you know the, your friends right around the corner or family members right there too. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, just a great, great feel good song. Tell me all about back porch. Yeah. So when we got you know all locked down and couldn't get out of the house and quarantine, I just I don't know. I just got super inspired about our back porch more than I ever had, you know, um, because we were out there so much. Like we were mm -hmm. like every night we were grilling out there, just trying to make the best of having to be home. You know, we play games, you know, cards or dominoes. We play 42 a lot. Um, and then, you know, dad's like telling his old stories of when he was a kid and what he did, you know, so the kids are around the fireplace and you're just having a great time. And I just wanted to capture that because I think a lot of us realized when we all slowed down, like we took these kind of nights for granted. And mm -hmm. so it's like, you want to savor those moments and you just want to remember all the memories and, and dream with your family. And I just wanted to capture that. Don't forget about those, those small moments that we just take advantage of. And they're just, they're, they just make us who we are, you know, and make you the kids who they are. It's just, those moments are just so important. I just wanted to capture it in a song, and that's, well, that's where that comes from. I tell you, this was another kind of beautiful three-song, uh, say, EP that you put out there at the same time. But uh, Daddy's Love Letter was mm. on uh, called Sunset View, which was a three-song EP you had out there, Golden Hour, uh, Scenic Route. Tell me about that project, because I'm sure a lot of fun in making that, and probably uh, still some great songs that you hold close to your heart too, right? Oh, man, yes. So, you know, a lot of my songs, um, I love women, and I feel like a lot of them are targeted to women. Not that they're not targeted to men or whatever, or written for <laughs> men, but a lot of them are kind of girly and cute. So I was like, I got to write a song for the daddies, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I sat there and I thought about, like, my husband and his, and our daughter's relationship and how I know when he has to walk her down the aisle, like, how hard mm -hmm. it's going to be. And so that's where that comes from is, like, this is the letter you know, that she's getting from her dad before he walks her down the aisle. And it's like, this is going to be hard, but I guess I'll walk you down the aisle tonight, you know, and I hope he's you know, all these different things that he hopes he's good and faithful. And mm -hmm. so it, it was a really cool ride. And a lot of people cry when I sing that song and they want to play it at their <laughs> weddings. And I just love it. So that was super fun. But this particular EP was the mm -hmm. first like three songs I had recorded in Nashville for the first time. So that was a, a really special project, working with a new producer. Because my producer here in Houston, um, he's great, um, but he does a lot of pop. And so I was really mm -hmm. excited about getting with a country producer and really getting more true to a country sound. And so I was super excited. And he's still my producer today. I still work with Justin Klump in Nashville. Incredible guy, very talented musician, writer, 
producer. So ever since Sunset View and, and that EP, mm -hmm. I've been in Nashville recording. I just love working with him. Well, you keep doing that because you're very good at it, no doubt. And it's a dream. And I look forward to uh, taking this ride with you, no doubt, here on the show and definitely just following along the new uh, music that, that comes out. Again, underneath is out there across all the platforms. Uh, check it out. Uh, you can also get some merch and visit her at tionacampbell.com. So make sure you do that uh, while you guys are out there, too, at the same time. All right. Time for me just to be quiet. It's, it's hard for me to do, especially this time of year with all the good <laughs> stuff that's happening. Um, and time for you to take over and play. Do what you do best. What's up next? All right, so I'm going to share that porch with y'all this time. Let's do it. All right. All right, here we go. In the South, it's how we do it. Grab some lemonade and head on to the back. Daddy's going to do some good Turn that music up, I hear some rascal flats. We're making those memories last. Cause time flies so fast. We're savoring these moments we have. Cause these things will pass. Oh, on the back porch. So we to the wind. Oh, on the back porch, moonlight that never dims, late nights, laughing so hard, I can barely breathe right now, wishing on stars, dreaming, views where I want to be, oh, on the back porch. Swing it to the wind Oh, on the back porch Moonlight that never dims Around the fire you better listen There's some stories told that you don't want to miss You are not here with screaming and hollering let it get to you, that's just what we do. We're making those memories last. Cause time lasts so fast. We're savoring these moments we have. Cause these things will pass. Oh, on the back porch. So we get to the moment. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass.
The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. I know our good buddy Brandon Bang is going to be there at Nashville, so definitely there'll probably be some taste tests of whiskey going on there if I had to just <laughs> throw it out there right now. So definitely, uh, and after the allergies I've been battling too, that's the best remedy for us to get a good glass of uh, Bangtail whiskey, which I love out there. It's uh, handcrafted, 90 proof out of Florida and Orlando. And of course, been with us uh, for over a year now, so we appreciate the support Brandon gives us here on the Backstage Pass. Check him out or that Easy Liquor app is another good way to go get uh, Bangtail whiskey sent right to your door. Everybody loves online shopping as well as MitchMax.com and our good friends over at Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. That is the wonderful, super talented uh, Tiona Campbell and Back Porch here on the uh, Backstage Pass. Looking forward to that. And the current single, which we've got to talk about and dive into as far as the writing and the, the uh, I would say choreography, but I want to say studio production. Uh, and like I said, maybe choreography, maybe we definitely could dance to it. <laughs> Underneath is out there too at the same time. Tell me all about this one and you guys just put this out at the end of uh, January. Yeah, yeah. So we're, it was recorded in Nashville too, and um, with Backport and um, a Common Dad. Those three were my last three singles. But yeah, so you know, girls just compare way too much, and I think sometimes we do all this extra stuff for the girls than we do for the guys, right? It's like I saw a post one day from a country artist. He's like we don't really care about the eyelashes like y'all do. <laughs> like, it's probably so true. But so it's just it's like, I'm with, it's like, I'm writing as I'm with my girlfriend and I, you know, I look across the way and I'm like, gosh, this girl is so pretty. Like, I wish I could wear that dress, but I'm just, you know, I'm not as pretty as she is. Like, there's no way I could pull it off. And so it's this conversation of like, just be true to yourself. What mm -hmm. is underneath is all that matter. Beauty fades you know, and we all have something truly unique. We're all truly may have similarities, but we truly are unique and there's something different. And if we could just like stay in our lane and like really own that, then we all have a place in this world to do something great. We do. And I tell you that last sentence right there, you, you, you meant something and it just, it hits me in a lot of ways too. We all have a position to do something great. You're doing that through your music and we just like to do that here uh, through this show, which we've done for the past still over three years now. So definitely that's uh, God has that plan and we may not agree with it all the times of the route we take to get there, but right. uh, he's got that plan <laughs> for us. And I guess if he, we were meant to just not do it, he would, he would let us know. It may yeah. <laughs> take a little while to do it, but I love it that you're spreading that message through mm -hmm. uh, your, your tunes and you're doing a very good job of, of doing you. that too at the same time. Love your there. show, by the way. Let me plug that. Your show is amazing. <laughs> Us appreciate artists it. appreciate it so much. We love you. Well, appreciate you for saying that too, no doubt. And just working hard and getting ready for that big event, which is going to be one hectic week, but definitely looking excited for a country radio seminar. It's a huge honor. Thank you, Christy Watkins over at Aristo and the fine folks who set everything up, man, to make this thing happen. My team, I couldn't do without Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten, Nick Canisales. All my team is fantastic after what they do behind the scenes and, and doing stuff, the graphics and everything else. And, I have to travel with a lot of the equipment, so definitely leaving Texas is going to be fun for a week. It'll be cold, but at the same time, we've got a, a hell of a lineup of artists coming into uh, the, the big media room there at the Omni Hotel. So definitely be on the lookout for so much uh, great stuff happening there and still adding to it. I'm trying to, like I was telling you before the show, having to invent times to be able to put uh, put artists on the schedule now. It's like working through lunch, to owner. It's like somebody's going to make a subway run or something or Quiznos <laughs> or whatever. Nashville's got to. It is not uh, easy doing what you love. <laughs> no. It's not. It's in no way is it, is it easy. Or the, the uh, I say the, the food there at the hotel. What's the Omni got? We'll find out with some restaurants. Say somebody go down there and grab us a sandwich, you know, or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Have some whiskey there. Just give me give me a shot of whiskey. I'll be able right. to. Uh, to get going. Hey, I want to jump into a little rapid fire with you because this is where we get to have a lot of the fun too. And again, the single is uh, underneath across all the uh, digital platforms and check her out at tionacampbell.com. Uh, I see a, a huge collection. We're talking about this before the show behind you. You mm -hmm. love vinyl. I love vinyl too. Yes. Uh, tell me all about the collection and, and some of those records behind you. And is one signed over your left shoulder? Yeah, this is Brie uh, Bagwell. Okay, I know Brie. Yeah, yeah. Texas girl. Texas girl. She's been on this yeah, show. She's yeah, she's a great storyteller. I saw her live at a, a singer songwriter round in Tomball. Ah, oh, great storyteller. Just love that girl. <laughs> and yeah. At the top, so, it looks like is that the Forrester sisters at the top? 
Um, so we've uh, got the judge. The judge. I couldn't tell. Okay. Yeah, we've got um, Miranda Lambert. Okay. All right. We've got Jesse James Decker. Gotta have her. She's yeah, gotta have her. She's and awesome. Um, I do have Diana Ross as Supremes. And it's okay. With the Temptations. That's what this is. <laughs> I like that. I dropped it. And I'm uh, like you too. I, I have to get one. It, there it goes. <laughs> I'll fix that later. Oh, and I have Mariah Carey at the top because I'm Mariah a Carey. huge Mariah Carey man. <laughs> but it's just a mix of like, I do have a mix of pop, country, mm -hmm. you know. And so this is just kind of like, I grew up on the Judds. I love the Judds. Mm -hmm. Mom and I would sing it all the time. But I also love Mariah Carey. So I feel like all of this, you know, has created my sound, you know. Yeah. Man, it's, so. it's, uh, I love it too, like, and I love vinyl because I, you know, I told you that last show I went to was Blackberry Smoker, one of them last summer, and definitely uh, they were down. They sold out their entire vinyl. It was one of the the um, the, the albums they just come out with. I think they're on the tour with, and I was like, just okay, it's like twenty five bucks or whatever. Just give me that one so I can just take it, left it in plastic. I've not even opened it yet, and, and I still I want to play <laughs> it, but it is sealed off. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the goal for me is to run into Charlie Starr when I get up there or or the, the guys up there and just say, hey, just y'all please autograph this on the. <laughs> yeah. And then I can unwrap it, autograph the cover and go get a go get a, <laughs> a piece of plastic or something to put it in. So I never want to I don't want to play it. It's something I want to pass down to my daughter, too. But that's uh -huh. the, uh, the the beauty of vinyl. No doubt about it, too. I love this. Al tunes in says, hey, from Wisconsin. I'd love to get into some of the uh, audience questions from time to time. George, this is good advice. I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I have to eat there. But. It'll be an evening thing or something, but don't do not do that while eating the uh, interviews. So, George, yes, I appreciate that. Yes, uh, is good. I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be – that's uh, people kept telling me, you know, because I had – here at Beaumont, we had one called um, uh, Nashville's Hot Chicken open up here. Oh, funny, really? In Beaumont okay. that took the place – yeah, it took the place out on Walden Road on I-10 out that way, and it took the place of what used to be Joe's Crab Shack right next to Cheddar's and, okay. and that area too. Uh, wasn't a good experience. No, no <laughs> knocking – here in Texas, but I'm sure the Nashville's hot chicken up yeah, there in town is definitely. It's good in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> but Addie B's, as they say, is the place to to check out. So George, I will uh, I won't do interviews and and, and have somebody bring, get a, get a sandwich or have somebody bring me a sandwich there at, at that particular <laughs> point in time. All right, let's do this one. I love rapid fire with this one. Uh, Tiona Campbell, favorite food or favorite beverage when it's like a go to must have. Must have chicken. Must have be beverage. Probably unsweet tea. Okay. See, I'm I'm the I'm with you on that same path, but it's like a half and half or always sweet. It's a weird concoction, but I have to do it half and half. I used uh, to do sweet and then I quit and now it's hard to go back. So I do like <laughs> half and half and unsweet with lemon. With lemon too. I like that too. And then chicken, yeah. grilled, fried, a little bit of both. Oh, fried. I mean fried, I like both, yeah. but yes. Yeah, it's it's like if you don't find a, a Popeyes or a church's somewhere close or even something bushes chicken or something better up up that way where you live too. It's uh I'm sure there's a better chicken place that you have around there beside a chain place I mean, honestly, too. Honestly, right? I do love Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> those are, <laughs> those <laughs> those are, are so good. <laughs> those are addicting too at the same time. All right, let's do this one. I love, love pulling this one out with the bag. Uh, favorite cartoons and favorite movies growing up as a child. What were they? Bugs Bunny. And then what was the other one? Uh, just any movies, any cartoons, any movies. Oh, yeah. So, movies. Oh, my gosh. The Other Woman. Like, all the chick flicks. Uh, the Sweetest <laughs> Thing. I mean, I love The Little Mermaid. <laughs> there you go. That's that's a classic. No doubt about it. I still, and you know what's funny? My daughter, she's getting into all that now, too. She's into the, the Bluey cartoons and all the Disney stuff and the Mickey Mickey Mouse's Fun House and whatever Aww. else is, is there, too. So, yeah, putting on The Little Mermaid, she's just zoned in. Kind of her eyes are just, hey, Daddy, I'm going to watch the that, too. The best. It's it's good out yes. there. Um, now, pizza connoisseur, do you love pizza? Yeah. Um, if you're ordering it in just for one night, I'm going to put a spin on this one. It's the first time I've asked this one. If you're ordering it just for Tiona okay. and nobody else can have a slice of pizza, here's the kicker part. We've always said what toppings go on the pizza, but what wine would you drink with the pizza? Because I always have to drink wine with my pizza. So is champagne considered a sparkling wine, right? There you go. I would, yes, drop that in the category. I love champagne, so it's like sparkly wine. <laughs> it is. That's what it is. So champagne, where's that go? All right. And what toppings on that pizza for you, if it's just for you? Hand tossed, pepperoni and cheese. Just boom. I'm playing. <laughs> Greasy pepperoni. Simple. And cheese and make it good there, too, man. That's And there's a, somebody told me about a, another place, and I'm going to come back 
adding another five pounds that we can actually work it off and whatever. Somebody told me about five point pizza up there. It's another good spot to get. I have not had that. So what I call pie, and which is good there too. So get a good uh, pizza up in Nashville. It's five point. There was another place I can't remember, but I'm sure people will be taking me uh, all different places to to have a little fun up there too. Which is the which is food great. there is great. Just about anywhere you go, like it it's, really it's good is. good food. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. All Just right, let's do this one. He's better in Texas. I will say that everybody, you know, everybody has said that. Really, yes. I, I, I find it's it to be. <laughs> so what is George saying here? Uh, oh, a taco place. Okay, taco Ooh. place. All right. Oh, well, and the okay. army. That's cool. All right. So we got yeah. that's good to know, George, because we'll be stuck there uh yeah, that'll all be day. Quick, be, easy. Yeah, we'll be nine to ten shows a day at, at the Omni in that media room. So uh, Jeff, go make the taco run. It's uh, near bar lines. Go get some <laughs> for me and Kirsty. Go do job, it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good there. Uh, I love this question too. I love pulling audience questions so yeah. everybody else can get a chance to chime in. I love this. Uh I love that. See, mm-hmm. Siona, how do you come up with a new song, personal experience, or other methods? Do you like to write with others? Oh, heck yeah. I do love to write with others. Um, I come up with songs basically. Okay, I've been writing for six years, and um, I'm not like I write five songs a day, or I want to write 100 songs at the end of the year. Like, I have to write when I'm inspired by something, whether it's like I want to capture back porch, or I want to say go after your dreams. Like, I have to be inspired by the message. So I've written about 75 songs. So for me, I have to have like, oh man, I got to get this out. Like this Mm -hmm. bubbling up in me, you know, um, that's how it comes for me. And it can come from rollerblading in a car, you know, it just comes from so many different. The last song I wrote, I took pictures for Call My Dad in Austin and there was this giddy up sign on the wall. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to write a song. Like, I love Mm -hmm. that. And the metaphor would be like, like, get on that horse and go after everything that God's created mm-hmm. you for. Like, giddy up and like, let's go. Like, it's time to go after what you're supposed to be doing. And just a different way of saying it and have like cowboy terms. And I wrote it with a guy in Liverpool in United Kingdom. And um, coolest thing ever, I was inspired by reading Willie Nelson's story in a magazine mm-hmm. that I got at the grocery store using three of his chords he used in a song. And like all of that together between the picture, this idea, Willie Nelson, like sometimes it, it's a couple of things. And then I love this song. I can't wait for y'all to hear this song. Super cool. Always a fun thing. Great question there too. If you guys have any more, we'll do a couple more. If I can uh, see some there in the comment box, we'll pull them. And of course, always uh, we'll, we'll share this after. And um, if you missed the live version, you can always tune in later on tonight, tomorrow, or any day after, any day thereafter. It's always great about the video interviews, no doubt. Uh, let me ask you this one, too. When it comes down to it, everybody wants that dream uh, duet or that, that that person to record a song with or that legendary stage to step on. I guess if there's a mix of both between someone you'd like to collaborate with that you haven't in the industry to either do a duet or a stage to step on with that person, mm-hmm. what, uh, what kind of combination would that look like? I want to open up for Rascal Flatts. I know they say they're dumb, but they're not. They're, they're coming not back, dumb. guys. No. They got to come back for one more because <laughs> they, they didn't do, get yeah. to do their last tour. Yeah, they do. And secondly, I want. I would love to do a duet with Chris Young. I think that would be pretty cool. Man, I'll tell you one thing. i tell you, that's that's one thing I might have a hand in to, to help you out, too, because uh, – <laughs> well, Don't get me you know, excited over here. Get you excited. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I can uh, – I'll, I'll I'll tell you there's some things off the air. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll just right. do that. I'm not gonna say something on the air too because I don't want to be recorded and be like, "Yep, you said you know." Right. But no, catch <laughs> catch me in the act too. We'll talk about that too at the same time. But I tell you what, I love the story is uh, fantastic, and all the songs we talked about, uh, Jesus and Coffee, the current single underneath, uh, Back Porch, uh, Call uh, Call My Dad, everything else we talked about today, Ride right of My Life. It's all on the uh, Spotify, and I'm sure everywhere you can download digital music and check her out at uh, Tiona Campbell. Uh, dot com. Tiona, appreciate the time as always. Looking forward to having you back on. I hope you enjoyed the experience. And definitely, we got to do this again, no doubt. Of course, I did. Love you. Love what you do. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you got it. Thanks to uh, Bank Till Whiskey and, of course, Hank Jr. Productions and MitchMax.com. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to take a little different angle tomorrow. The founder and lead guitarist of uh, Twisted Sister, JJ French, is coming on the show. We get to talk about just many, many years of hits. And, of course, uh, Thursday, We'll do a little throwback country with the great, the icon, John Michael Montgomery here on the Backstage Pass Thursday at 4 o'clock. Looking forward to that, too, as well. And also Friday, he's uh, kicking ass and taking names in Nashville. He's known as Fillmore 
If you don't know who that is, you might want to go look him up. <laughs> we'll have Phil Moore oh. on the show coming up on Friday here on the uh, Backstage Pass. We'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great night and enjoy the rest of your week. And also, happy early mm-hmm. Valentine's Day to everybody out there. We'll definitely do a Valentine's Day next week, a show at uh, 4 o'clock on February 14th. Then, Nashville, Tennessee. We'll see you guys there. Have a great night. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>